Read what you got, huh? It's the book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 11. Bring it out. God judges the righteous. What the Bible say? God judges the righteous. What reason would God would be called a judge for if he's not going to judge nobody? Right? If everybody going to get the kingdom of heaven, there would be no point in him judging anybody. Go ahead and read that from the top, huh? God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. God is what? And God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. Go ahead and read that scripture one more time so we can sink into the heads of our people. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So while you continue to be in wickedness, when you know that God hates sin, he hates the who hate the wicked doers, the evil doers, the people that's walking around in darkness, not keeping his laws, that's the commandments. It's a judgment for you. That's what the Lord is saying. Read right. what you got. But we are here to call you back to repentance so you can get it right. Yes, we scream, we shout. Give me that in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and 1, huh? We are here to do the Lord's work, thus said the Lord. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Bring it out. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. When we are here to tell the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, repent ye therefore and, and be, be converted. converted. Repent and change. Go ahead and read. That your sins may be blotted out. That's your what? That your sins may be blotted out. We all can get our sins blotted out. All we got to do is repent. But this is the thing. Our people have learned this in the Christian church. When we repent, now we good with God. No, repentance is an action word. When you repent, that means you got to come back to keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's what true repentance is. It's to change. We must change, Israel. When we talk to you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read that one more time from the top, huh? This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Bring it out. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. That's your what? That, that your, your sins, sins may be blotted, blotted out. out. That's what we want, man. We want your sins to be blotted out. Your pastors in your Christian church ain't going to tell you how to save yourselves. They too busy telling you that you saved already. And when the Lord come back, you think you're going to get delivered. No, you're going to taste that lake of fire. The missiles is going to be inbound and that sound, warning sound going off, and you're going to be stuck here with it. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Bring it out. Cry out loud. Spear not. Lift up their voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Let me read that one more time, huh? Cry out loud. What we out here to do? Cry, Cry out loud. loud. We out here to do? Cry, Cry out loud. loud. Spare not. We out here, out here to spare any feelings. We out here to tell you, thus said the Lord. If you're going to repent or you're not, you can drop that and give me the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Read that again from the top, huh? Cry out loud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's why we got the microphone out here. And show my people their transgression. God told us to come out here and lift up our voice like a trumpet and show you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans your sins. That's transgression right. is transgression the breaking of the God's laws. Too many of our people are breaking the God's laws and you walk about your day-to-day -day life like there ain't going to be no consequence for it. Right. That's what you do. Why? Yeah, because you right. love the pastors. Right? I'm going to listen to my pastor. I trust my pastor. But your pastor won't go to the, smoke, the lake of fire and pretend so. That's right. That's what we don't understand. We're going to put the Matthew chapter 15 verse 14. We do. You got something going to bring that out. This is the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 3. I tell you nay. the Bible say? I, I tell, tell you, you nay. nay. But except ye repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. What God say? Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. We all watch, we all know. It's either get down or lay down. The Lord said either repent or get put to death. That's right. Hey, King, you know who you are going to the Bible, bro? Well, what y'all do from King? All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. How long have you been knowing the truth, brother? For a minute? Okay, well, um, you got fringes? Okay, well, we got to come back to keeping these laws. That's the only how we can please God. Because the pastors say that the laws is done away with. We don't have to do them no more. And you are, as you know, God is all about his laws. You see what I'm saying? Do that's Deuteronomy 8 and 11. Let me do Deuteronomy 8 and 11 real quick. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Bring it out. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. God told us not to forget about him. Go ahead and read. And not keeping his his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. God command us to do these things this day, today, all right? 
So you got to make haste to do this thing, King. You know what I'm saying? We got to be in the light and let our light shine amongst our people. We got to be true examples. Okay, give me that in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12, Hebrews. Because the Lord told us to do these things. You see what I'm saying? And we out here to please him, not to please man. Man gonna right. be destroyed. We trying to make our number count it so we can get that kingdom of heaven. That's what we chasing. Right. We chasing our riches, man. You see what I'm saying? Read what you got. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter four, verse twelve. Bring it out. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer. What we gotta do? Be, be an example, example of, the of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And that's what we got to do. That's why we got to show that example. That's why I told you that, because you knew the truth for some time now. Okay, you know you a Judite, and it's time to get on board, because you already know this place is about to be destroyed. This place is getting destroyed our generation. You see what I'm saying? We ain't got time left. You see what I'm right. saying? Right. See what you got, huh? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 60. Bring it out. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. What your brother got to do? I, I made, made haste, haste and, and delayed, delayed not, not to keep, keep thy, thy commandments. You got to hurry up. You see what I'm saying? We can't be just prolonging and pitting off from day to day, but let's see it out of God's mouth. This the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7. Bring it out. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. Right? Go ahead. And put off not from day to day. And don't be putting it off from day to day. I'm going to do it the next week. I'm going to give me my fringes next Tuesday. No, if you could get them, order them as soon as possible. God. Because we all know when the Lord come back, if we ain't struck in that strange apparel, we already know what we're getting. Uh, that lake of fire is going to be waiting on us. Give me that in the book of Zephaniah chapter 1 and 8. Go ahead and read with the number time from the top. Huh? Make no tarry to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly, for what? For, for suddenly, for what? For, for suddenly, suddenly, shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. For suddenly, shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, King. And in thy security, and I what? And, and in, in thy, thy security, security, and your security, and your home, when you comfortable at? When you in your car by yourself, when you comfortable at? What's going to happen? Thou shalt be destroyed. What's going to happen? Thou, Thou shalt, shalt be, be destroyed. destroyed. We don't want that judgment. You see what I'm saying, King? You already know what this thing is about. You see what I'm saying? The closer you get with the most I got, the better you're going to live. That's right. You see what I'm saying? The far we stay away from us, the reckless we're going to live. That's you see right. what I'm saying? What, what you got? This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. The Lord said when he cracked that sky, the women that's wearing pants, the men that put on women garments, that's he's right. gonna punish them, right? That's how the Lord get down, but guess what? This earth, this world, these people say, no, do as you will, right? It's okay for men to be gay. It's okay oh, for women to muscle with women. You see what I'm saying? But that's evil in God's eyes. That's and right. the sad that's thing right. about it is most of these People that go to church, that's in the church, they go right along and do what man says. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Give me that in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. But this is the thing that we have to change from. We got to come back to the Lord, man. So we will not be destroyed, right? We out here, we in the light. So we see the destruction coming to our people if they don't repent. They don't see the destruction coming to them. They don't think there's no destruction coming, King. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Acts. Chapter 5, verse 29. Bring it out. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We, we ought to obey God rather than, than men. What the Bible say? We, we ought to obey God rather than men. But all people believe man over God. That's why we're in the midst of sin. Right? Well, all people smoke weed because they didn't legalize it now. So now all people, it's, just, it's up for grabs now. We're just going to the states that they made illegal. You see what I'm saying? All, God told us not to kill, but all females is aborting babies. You see what I'm saying? That's like right. it ain't nothing, man. That's a punishment coming to our people. But we don't even know this, man. We don't know. We out here to warn our people. This is something serious, but all people take it for a joke, man. That's right. That's what we do. We take it for a joke. But when he, we all know he's coming back as a thief in the night. Go ahead and give me that in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 37. Read what you got. It's the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Bring it out. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our father. The God of who? The God, the God of, of our, our father. father. The God of everybody. The God, the God of our, our father. father. The God is only the God of you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The heathen right. nation got idols. They don't have our God. Our God has dealing with them. Go ahead and read. The God of our fathers. Raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and, and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance 
To Israel. Give repentance to who? To Israel. Give me that look up to Luke chapter 1, verse 68, all right? Right? Give me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. All right? This is the this is what we out here to do. We out here to tell you the truth. You got a question? What's your question? Right here. On Zoom meetings, online. We don't have a building here in Pittsburgh. We got buildings in different cities, but not here in Pittsburgh yet. All right? If you got any questions, let me know. You should have questions, brother. Okay, go ahead and read. This is the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 2. Bring it out. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as, as a, a thief, thief in, in the, the night. night. We all know the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. Don't catch us right. off guard, right? It's gonna be a surprise. It's gonna catch, definitely gonna be a bad surprise because our people don't think you're coming back. If you come back tonight, our people will be lost. They'll be looking around like, oh my God, they're calling the same God as supposed to redeem them, but meanwhile, he's gonna destroy them. Go ahead and read that from the top, huh? It's the book of 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 2. Bring it out. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they say, shall say peace and safety. When they shall say what? Peace and safety. When they shall say what? Peace, peace and, and safety. And that's right around the corner. You see what I'm saying? That's right around the corner. They're trying to call for peace from China. Dealing with, uh, what, who, who was that? Um, Who's China going up against? The, um, Taiwan. China and Taiwan. Right? Russia and Ukraine. See what I'm saying? These, it's a lot of countries that's at war with each other right now. They not putting that on the local news, brother. We lost in the sauce. They hiding all that from us. Why you think he's going to catch us off guard at the thief in the night? Because we not knowing nothing that's going on that's going to catch us at the thief in the night. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it out. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. The God said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. We already know that God is the God of Israel only. Hey, brother, you God love everybody? You God love everybody? Yeah. You love everybody? Yeah. Okay, give me the book of Romans chapter 9, 13. We're going to read about it. We're going to read it out of the Word. We're going we're gonna to put you down with some truth. This is the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it out. Let's be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Hey, what's your name, brother? What's your name? Javon. 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 Did you hear what that said? No, I'm on Badaya. Oh, you, you're Dutch. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay, I'm going to call you Dutch. That's easier. All right? So, Dutch, did you hear what that said? Okay, go ahead and read. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. He has came down here, got crucified for his people. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us. He has raised up a horn of salvation for all 12 tribes, us. In the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet. As he speaks today by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. All throughout history we know that the prophets was always out there on the scene. Go ahead. That we should be saved from we should be what? That, that we, we should, should be saved. saved. That we should be what? That, that we, we should be saved from who? From, from our enemies. From our what? From, from our enemies. From our what? From, from our enemies. Well, God said he's going to save us from our enemies. Did you know that you got enemies? Those are fellow brothers that, you know, the blood and the crips and the people you beef with or somebody who robbed me, those, those enemies? No. So yeah, oh, that's a, that's the thing. I like that. I like that. But God is telling us that we got physical enemies. No, listen to me. Okay. Listen to this. Now we just said that God is the God of Israel. He's coming to save it for Israel. He's going to deliver the Israelites from the hand of their enemies. Give me the book up. Nehemiah 5 and 9. We're going to show you about enemies since you don't know. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. Bring it up. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. No, God don't hate nobody. But Esau, Esau have I, I hated. hated. God loved Jacob and he hate Esau. Do That's you know who right. Esau is? Okay. Esau is the specifically the Caucasian man. That's Esau. 
That's right. They changed all the names of the Bible so we wouldn't identify ourselves or see ourselves in here. That's why they gave us African American. But meanwhile, the African Americans in the Bible, you read about the Judites, the child of Judah, them the African Americans. Right. You see what I'm saying? So this is what we out here to tell our people the truth, King, because our people have been lied to for way too long. You with me, Dutch? I'm with you. I'm with you. Go ahead, go ahead and read. Now let's find out about our enemies. Let's read about our enemies. Go ahead and read. Oh, it's the book of Nehemiah, chapter five, verse nine. Bring it up. Again. Oh, I never limited myself to knowledge. Okay, I'll pray. I'll oh, pray. This is smart man. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter five, verse nine. Bring it up. Also, I said, it is now good that ye do. Are ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemy? The heathen or what? Our, our enemy. enemy. Who is the heathen? Our, our enemy. enemy. You know who the heathen nation is? Anybody outside of the nation of Israel. That's, That's right. right. So that would be your, it consists of your Arabs, your Caucasians, right. your African right. men. The Africans sold us into to the white men to get us over here on slave ships. So the African man is your enemy. The Arabs is your enemy, the Caucasian is your enemy, That's right. the Chinese, the Japanese, right? The Iraqis is our enemies. You see what I'm saying? All the other nations is our enemies. They hate us. They look down and despise us, do they not? But well, we're going to get deep into this. Go ahead and read. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Bring it out. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So we up under curses, that's why we're in the low state in the ghettos and things of that nature. Go ahead. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command thee this day. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Why is this happening? Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. What do you say? Therefore, Therefore shall thou, thou serve thine, thine enemies. enemies. What happened to the black suspension of America? Therefore, Therefore shall thou, thou serve thine, thine enemies, enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. The Lord sends the enemies against us. It was the Lord who did it. They can't beat us, right? That's right. We take over everything in the sports world. Go ahead. I believe, we're probably a minute. I mean, I believe y'all are completely right. Mm -hmm. I think it's Deciphering who the enemies are. The God, so he's the enemy, the enemy. I feel this is just my opinion. This is my opinion. Is the enemy will be yourself. So you don't have control of nobody else. But you do have one thing you do have free will. You so what did God tell us? So look, let me finish. The, the, the enemies, I would say, will be, will be lust. I got it, I got it, King. The enemy will be lust will be uh, adultery. Those are the things uh, that we battle with. Are, They're not enemies, they things that we battle enemies, with. It's yes, a difference exactly. between an enemy and we something are, that you battle we with. We are our, enemy, our worst enemy. Right. Because we believe that we're, what, we're doing is, what, we're, what we're doing is righteous. Right. But we, there's, only, there's only one person that is 100% pure, 100% good, 100% morality, perfect. And who was that? The man of fear, the father. Oh, so he was perfect. He's righteous. And all the things that you're saying. Well, let me ask you a question now. Did he tell us to be righteous the same way he's righteous? Did he tell us to do so? Give me Genesis 17, 1. Yeah, we're going to read it to you. Give me the book of Job, chapter 1 and 1. We're going to read it to you. All right? Read what you got. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 17, from the top. Bring it out. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect. Be thou what? And be thou perfect. Go ahead and read what you got. This is the book of Job, chapter one, verse one. Bring it up. There was a man in the land of us, whose name was Job, and, and that, that man, man was perfect. Who was Job? And that, that man, man was perfect. perfect. Let's get it out of Christ's mouth himself and see what he told us. Go ahead and read. The book of Matthew, chapter five, verse 48. Bring it out. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Those are the straight words from our Messiah. He said, be therefore perfect. He said, be perfect. Is righteousness? What is righteousness? There's a big difference between that. Okay, what is Just what is, because there's only one man that's perfect. No, no. What did Christ say? Did he tell us not to be perfect? Because you do say we can't be perfect. Is that what you're saying? Just because you're not perfect doesn't mean you shouldn't strive to be the best. That's what we are here to tell our people. 
Be perfect. But read it again. Let's see. What, let's see if you're right. You say he didn't say be perfect. Let's see what he said. Be therefore perfect. You listen very carefully. Be therefore perfect. What did he say? Be therefore perfect. He said be therefore perfect, brother. No, he ain't say scratch. He said be therefore perfect. That's right. Be as perfect as you can be, but knowing we cannot be perfect. What makes us perfect? That we. Psalms. What makes us perfect? Nineteen eleven. Actually, we're not. Nineteen seven. But what makes us? We're not perfect. Right? But what makes us perfect? That we realize that we're not perfect and we can still strive to be as perfect as, being, as, perfect as we can be. And, and that's off again. Let's find out what it is. Read what you got. <laughs> Psalms 19, verse 7. We got seven. you, Dutch. We got you, bro. <laughs> the, the law of the Lord is perfect. The what? The, the law, law of the Lord, Lord is, is perfect. perfect. How do we, what makes us perfect? The, the law, law of the, the Lord, Lord is perfect. perfect. Converting the soul. The laws of God is Perfect, changing our right. soul. That's he right. Was perfect. He said we were perfect. But did Christ tell us to be perfect? He said, careful, read the words again. Well, listen, words. listen, Dutch, read it. Be very careful. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What do the word convert mean? He said, be thou perfect or something like that. No, we well, read it again because I want you to understand. This is, the book. this is the book of Psalms. Chapter 19, verse 7. Bring it up. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Before that, before that. Be there for it, perfect. Oh, yeah, okay, go yeah. back to Matthew. That's what we're talking about yeah. in Matthew yeah, yeah, 5, yeah. 48. Go ahead. It's easy to get confused. Matthew 5, 48. Be there for perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. What makes this perfect, like Dutch? Be there for perfect. Be perfect like your father's perfect. Look what you got. Listen, yeah, Dutch. This is the book of First John, be chapter perfect. three. No, I need you to listen, we brother. Be perfect. Only one man's perfect. If that's the case, we are. We, we're going to read about him. We are gods. We are gods. That's right. You didn't know that? We, we are part of God. Give me Psalms eighty. Come, six, I'll bring what you got. This is the book of First John, chapter three, verse five. Bring it he's up. giving all the perfect to the Lord, but we're gonna read about him because he's perfect too. We just read that Job was perfect, did we not? Read that, oh, so if Job was perfect, that means we can be perfect. Go ahead and read. This is the book of First John, chapter three, verse five. Bring it up. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. The Lord was manifested to take away our sins, and he done that. And in him is no sin. In him is no sin. Which means he was what? Perfect. And what is sinless? There you go. There you go. No mistake. Perfect. But for him to die for us, we had to have a sin to die for. This is a lot of parts of the scripture that we Listen, listen. Give me the book of um, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I want you to hear something, King. All right, because this so is very important. Sins, it is. That means they had to have a sin okay, we're going to read the scripture. We're going to read the scripture. I need you to listen to it, though, King. This is our God. This is our Father. This is coming straight out of the Bible. This ain't our words. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Read it up. And be not conformed to this world. God told us not to be conformed to this world because it messes our mind up. Go ahead and read. But ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What do you say? Be, be, be transformed by, by the renewing, renewing of your mind. mind. God told us to be transformed, be changed by the renewing of our mind. Because this world has taught us nothing but how to go against God. Okay, that's what we. So you agree that God is perfect, correct? God written in this Bible and he gave it to us and told us to be perfect. So is that true? I think yeah. we misinterpreted that. You say something what it was and not what it is. We read in the Bible, thus that the Lord as it's written, King. You see what I'm saying? We read it as it is. Now, I'm, I'm rolling with you. I'm giving you a chance. Now, you said that God is perfect. Is this Bible perfect? Yes or no? When you walk past, right? Right. That's why we. That's why we got the Bible. Everybody got opinion. All of us out here got opinions. Listen to me, Dutch. Everybody out here got different opinions, right? 
But God's opinion is the opinion overall. Right. So his, hold on, touch. This Bible breaks down all the opinions that we all have. So if the Bible says something, that's what corrects us. But your correction will be different from my correction. His correction will be different from his correction. But this is the number one correction. The way, the way we read that and interpret it will be different too. No, no that's why we went to precepts. We, that's why we go to the precepts for. I got something that was different when I heard of it than you did. Right. But a lot of our people like to hear the seat. That's right. The Bible. I, it's not it's not about me and it's not about you. I'm not saying this from my own words, Dutch. Dutch, I'm going strictly off the of scriptures. We reading straight scriptures. I didn't say I didn't even give you not one opinion that I had myself. I didn't do that. I gave you all God's opinions, King. And you going against it. I let you read it first and then I gave you my what I turned This is what you gotta understand, Dutch. We don't care about no listen, Dutch. We don't care about nobody's opinion. Because right. we down with the most high opinion. Right. And we got here to get everybody to come back to him. The only way we get our people to come back home is coming back to God's opinion. Well, yeah, not right. nobody else's. You see what I'm saying? So if you, you agreeing and then you disagreeing. But every time you disagree, you disagree with the most high. Exactly. That's right. The number one thing is, I don't judge nobody. I question that. First John 3 What is sin? What is sin, Dutch? What is sin, brother? I just feel like when you judge something, God told us to judge. But anyways, we offer that. What is sin? Let's move on. What is sin? Sin is anything against God, right? Let's see what God said. Do what you got. So the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever commits sin transgress the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the breaking of the law. So what is the law? What is the law? We're going to give you some laws. How about that? Give me the book of Leviticus chapter Bring 19. Bring it out! Bring verse it seven. out! Give me Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. This is the book of Le Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. Bring it out! And the swine! the what? And the swine! You know what swine is, right, Dutch? Hey, go ahead. Though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. A disgusting, filthy animal. He chewed, he chewed not the cud. That means he got different areas in the stomach that hold waste. Go ahead. He is unclean to you. The pig is unclean to us. Of his flesh shall ye not eat. God told us not to eat it. And their carcass shall ye not touch. He said the pig is so defiled he don't even want us touching it with our hands. Right. Not alone eating it, Dutch. Now that's a law. The laws make us perfect. So if you start eating pork, now you're starting to become perfect. Because that's one law that you've been perfected. Let's get another law. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 27. Ye shall not ye shall not round the corners of your head. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy hair. What that mean, Dutch? Well, right, he's reaching out ball or head. That's right! Like, like Michael Jordan, because that's an Egyptian custom. What were we doing in Egypt, ancient Egypt? What were the Israelites doing in ancient Egypt? We were slaves. We were slaves. And Egyptians had bald heads, and they made us cut our hair to be bald. But God said not to do that. Now, under the Egyptian custom, we had no choice because that was just hard bondage for us. Now, we're in this captivity, we could keep this law because they, they don't come down on us hard enough to where we got to shave our head. We could do what we want. We got a little bit of opening. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. We cannot print any marks upon us. What that mean? See that? So it's starting to sound to me like you agree with some things of the Bible. But you don't agree I with believe, some things. The I reason believe. I said that because you don't agree with being perfect. A lot of our people don't want to be perfect because we don't want to stop. We don't want to change. We like to keep, keep staying in sin and staying in darkness. And like to justify it on top of that. That's why we don't want to change. That's why you keep rejecting to be perfect when God told us to be perfect. So if I do not bother your head, if I do not shave your beard, that's another step to perfection, to being perfect. That's right. So remember, we read, the laws makes us perfect. The law is perfect changing the soul. That's what makes us perfect, Dutch. 
See what I'm saying, brother? I believe every religion has. We're not no religion. We're not no religion. Okay, tell me one. Tell me one point that we interpret. Just tell me the mistake. Tell me what we interpret in this Bible, so we can go over it again. Okay, let's touch on back on enemies. Nehemiah is telling us direct. Five and nine. All right, and you give me the book of South Rock, chapter twelve, verse ten. What what you got? There's a book in Nehemiah, chapter five, verse nine. Bring it out. Now the thing is, they don't read this scripture in the churches is because they're too busy teaching us that God loves everybody, and if God loves everybody, we cannot have enemies. But let's see what God says. This is the book in Nehemiah, chapter five, verse nine. Bring it out. Also, I said. It is not good that ye do, are ye not to walk in the fear of our God, because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. The heathen are what? Our, our enemies. enemies. Who was the children of Israel enemy, king? <laughs> he just said it. Dutch, come on, bro, with me. Read it again. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. You got too many? You know everything in here is 100% correct. I mean, the Bible, I would say the Bible is not correct. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. Now, read that one more time. Let's listen, Dutch. Listen up. Also, I said, it is not good that ye do. Are ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of our of the heathen, our enemies? Give me Deuteronomy 68. Bible, teach you that everyone, 28, 68. Hey, Dutch. Yeah. Let's see something. Let's see what happened. How did we get on? I mean, we gonna go through some curses and make it plain as I can barely make it. Now, how did we get here to America? How did our ancestors get here? To so how did we get here through on slavery though? On boats. On boats. On slave ships. Correct. You with me on that? That's in the Bible. We are gonna read it. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-eight. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Let's be going. Let's read it. Let's read. Let's find out what the word Egypt means. Make Let it me plain. Go. Let's find out what Egypt means. This is the book of Exodus, chapter twenty, verse two. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of what? Out, out of, of the, the house, house of bondage. bondage. Egypt means bondage. When you pull out your dollar bill and look on the back of it, it's a pyramid representing our still our bondage. That's We're still right. in captivity. I believe they mean your body. Is Okay, we're going to read it though. Go back to 16. And, and the Lord and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into slavery again. With ships. How do we get to America? With, with ships. ships. How do we get to the United States? With, with ships. ships. How do we get to the USA? With, with ships. ships. Go ahead and read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, that thou shalt see it no more again. And when our ancestors came over here, they not none of them went back to Israel and seen our homeland again. We could travel this day. Right? But our, the Lord said, we was going to come over here on ships and we was not going to see our homeland again. They have not seen their homeland again, King. Go ahead and read. And then he shall be sold. You shall be what? Then he shall, shall be, be sold. sold. We got off of them slave ships. We were sold for what? Unto your enemies. Unto who? Unto, unto your, your enemies. enemies. Our unto, unto your, your enemies. enemies. We were sold unto our enemies. When we, did we have chains on when we was on those slave ships? Hold on, hold on, answer the question. Come on, Dutch. Well, come on, Dutch. No, but I, no, hold on. It is, it's saying what it's saying because it's a Hold on, hey, Dutch, let me get, let me get two more scripts for you. Let me get two more scripts for you. Go ahead and read this. All right, all right. Uh -oh, read what you got. Not, do that in the room. Yeah, one more, just hear this last scripture. Hear this last scripture, Dutch. 